Good evening. Irene hasn't been a hurricane since yesterday, and it's long gone by now, way up and over Canada. But you would not believe the damage that it's still unleashing over New England. This comes after it already chewed up the shoreline along the eastern seaboard. Tonight, in the wake of Irene, at least 37 people are dead. Five million Americans, at least, are without power from North Carolina on up to Maine. The estimates at damage begin at $2 billion and go up from there. With so many Americans already in the dark from this, the danger tonight is rising floodwaters from upstate New York into New England. We begin tonight with Jim Cantori of the Weather Channel in Lower Bartonsville, Vermont. And Jim, not only did you grow up around there, last night you predicted this would be the worst hurricane in, of all places, Vermont history, and that's coming true. Yeah, usually storms weaken pretty quickly, Brian, and accelerate up through New England. This one was so big, and it took its time. And this is the result of a flash flood, just one of the iconic covered bridges that has been lost here in Vermont that would take you from Lower Bartonsville across to the town of Chester in about five seconds. Now that trip takes about 15 minutes because you have to go around here the Williams River. Here's the deal. We've got 200 or more roads tonight that are closed and there isn't one inch of Vermont that hasn't been touched by this. NBC's Ron Allen has more. Irene left a wake of destruction in a mountainous landlocked state so far north Many never dreamed a tropical storm would strike. Torrents of rain turned babbling brooks into raging rivers. Fortunately, we were spared the heavy winds from the hurricane, but this type of damage right here is going to be far more devastating in the long run. Here it comes. Oh, my God. Cars were sucked downstream. This trailer home was shoved under a railroad bridge. Oh, my God. An iconic covered bridge disappeared into a swollen river washing away a century of history. Dean Hamilton has worked his family's farm all his 58 years. This is something that's never happened in my lifetime. How's it going in there? Vermont's governor called it the state's worst flooding perhaps ever. We are convinced that we have further challenges ahead. There will be more loss of life. At least two people already have died in the floodwaters. Officials say several small communities, hundreds of people, are still cut off and cannot be reached. And every major road in the state has some damage. Brattleboro, known for its arts, was today covered in mud. Alyssa Bonte's store was badly damaged, but not her spirit. It's disheartening, but it's a wonderful community, and I feel like we're well-loved, and everything will be okay. And in some places, the floodwaters are still rising. Ron Allen, NBC News, Rattleboro, Vermont. And you got to go back to the late 1800s for when this bridge was first here, a wooden covered bridge, obviously a very iconic symbol, rebuilt in the 1980s and now gone to Mother Nature's fast-moving waters from last night. Let's go back and take a look at this hurricane. And even though we didn't get to that big stature of Category 3 or 4, this thing was a wrecking machine all the way from Puerto Rico up through Bahamas. Here you can see it, 3 o'clock on Thursday, coming all the way up through the Carolinas on Saturday morning and then up through New England. It moves slow enough to produce significant rainfall. And look at this area where we had significant flooding. Huge areas all across New England. And there you see Vermont sitting right there, Brian, almost every inch, as I mentioned, recovering uh, from flooding this evening. Five all-time record crests. In other words, the river has never gotten that high on rivers across the state of Vermont. Well, Jim, help a lay person out here. You and I were on the air most of the weekend tracking this storm. Most people thought enough already. Right. This was the tail end. It was booking out of here. And frankly, this destruction, this flooding in New England took a lot of us by surprise. Did it take uh, meteorologists by surprise? Well, the problem was is this was really set up to be a problem because there was so much rain up here. You and I actually talked about Philadelphia and New York setting all-time wettest August, and that wet weather has continued, obviously, all the way up through New England. But when you start looking at the pictures and the rate of the rainfall, I mean, we're bringing a tropical system to the northern latitudes. That always means trouble. That always means trouble. And as you can see from some of these pictures and some scenes here, uh, just horrible scenes. And, Brian, i got to tell you, uh, having grown up in through here and seeing the Queechee Bridge and seeing the fields in Windsor, Vermont, that I played on so many times as a 
Hartford hurricane uh, completely underwater. It, it, it takes you. It takes you by heart. Oh, that bridge over Queechy, Vermont, uh, one of the most beautiful spots in all of New England. Jim Cantori, thanks for your right. uh, hard work. And again, following this storm and its, its latest uh, um, uh, tributary.